Welcome, foolish mortals, to kind of an off day. It's a uh, Wednesday, and uh, usually I don't do uh, streams on Wednesdays because uh, so many other people have times booked. But um, I ran out of time Monday, so I want to do a kind of a quick little rundown of what I pulled out of my um, comic box uh, on Saturday. Now I hadn't been to my comic box in a couple months. Uh, but I pulled a lot of stuff, and um, I was surprised there was actually as much as there was. Um, you know how that is—you kind of get a—you um, kind of get behind a little bit, and as soon as you're behind, it's hard to catch up. So I have a lot um, of comics, and. Um, I can't get that glare off without turning all the lights off. I'm going to figure that out. Anyway, I'll hold them up so you can see them better. But I probably have about, I don't know, 40 or more comics to kind of go through real quick. So um, I have not read most of them. So if anybody has any questions, I don't really have a lot of answers for you as far as what's in these issues. Um, but... I'll be glad to go over them, and then we can just uh, chit-chat on what is going on. Um, there we go. That's what I want to see. So um, let's just kind of dig into this, and we can go from there. So first up is some uh, Transformers versus uh, Transformers and Back to the Future. This is issue number three. This was the cover one. You can see it's got Gigawatt and Doc Brown and Einstein and Megatron in the background. And this was cover A. This is cover B. And it's been an interesting story so far. Um, you know, the, you've still got kind of 2015 Doc, uh, Doc Brown and uh, Marty and even uh, Biff is in here. And the thing is, is when Marty came back from 1955, he actually came back into a world that was dominated by Transformers. So it's an interesting book. Um, I've enjoyed it so far, but um, those are the two covers for this main issue. All right. Oh, stuff out of my way. So I can sit stuff here. Okay. Next up is... Um, Season two just began of the new Batman animated adventures. I really like this book. It basically is still being done by the same people who made the animated series. It's the same animations. It's the same art style, um, but it kind of moves the story forward a little bit. And so you still have Batgirl and Nightwing and Batman and Robin and all those characters you would have. And, um, I really enjoyed it. It's been pretty cool. Um, let's see. Let's do a couple Star Wars things. So, during all of last year, every comic that came out from Star Wars, whether it was the uh, normal line or Bounty Hunters or Dr. Aphra or whoever, um, had an alt cover. Hey, Fabulous, how you doing? And those alt covers all had something to do with the Empire Strikes Back. And so this is these two issues basically retell the story of the Empire Strikes Back through the different covers they've done for each comic. And so then down at the bottom, it'll tell you what cover this was on. This is on Darth Vader, number six from last year. And it goes all the way up and does some, uh, ske has sketch stuff, things like that. It was actually really cool. And then, of course, you couldn't have uh, an alt cover without alt covers of our alt covers. So these are just other ones from different comics because they had like five running Star Wars comics last year. And so there's a lot of really cool art in here. Some of these I'd actually really like to have as a 
um, like wall stuff. So those were the two uh, that Marvel collected this year. Um, so pretty cool. Um, next up, I have not started reading this, although I need to. I have misplaced the other two issues. So it's Stranger Things, Dungeons and Dragons. And so this story is basically the guys doing a campaign and teaching Eleven how to play Dungeons and Dragons and kind of some stuff that goes on along the way. Um, but, of course, with all stuff from IDW, it's really pretty. And they also have alt covers because everybody has to have alt covers these days. So this is um, uh, issue three of four. And there were actually several covers of three. So these were the three of three, three of issue three. And then issue four had a couple alt covers too. Oops. Like I said, I've, I keep meaning to get into these because um, I miss Stranger Things a lot. I just um, I picked up a couple of the novels that they did based on the show. And um, I'm, I want to get back, back into Stranger Things a little bit. So there's a, there was a main comic line uh, that I picked up. And there's also um, some books. So once I get those, then, um, you know, that'll be cool. Um, back to Star Wars for a minute. There's Star Wars Adventures, which is kind of, I think these are outside of canon, but they're more kiddie stories. Um, you get the different artwork and you get all kinds of different stories from Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon and stuff like that. So it's cool because you get all stories, but some of them must be canon um, simply because of one of the issues that's coming up. And so you get, it gives you great stories so you can get stuff with Rio and Beckett and them. And still, you know, they're just small stories. But this one, The Weapon of a Jedi, this is a collection of um, a couple issues of Star Wars Adventures where Luke gets his new um, gold lightsaber. And it tells the story of how he goes and how he gets into the temple and how he picks it up. And so um, these must be canon in some way, but I'm not really sure how. I got to figure that out. But um, Star Wars Adventures is only on issue four or five, so it's not like they're that deep. And they're not rolling into, the reason I'm not sure if they're canon is because they're not rolling into the War of the Bounty Hunters thing that's going on at the moment. So one comic I did not know I was so far behind on is Firefly. And Firefly has been really good. It kind of, it, it fills in a lot of different information. It gives you, you know, more new adventures of the old crew. Um, this all takes place after Serenity. So you don't get Walsh, you know, unfortunately, or Book. Um, in most of the stories, sometimes there's flashback stuff, but as with everything, there are alt covers. So this is, I think this is cover A and it's got, so looking at, at Walsh's dinosaurs, which is kind of sad. Um, and then there's 25, them looking a little happier in better days. Then issue 26 And this is an alt cover. And I'm hoping, I haven't even opened this one. I'm hoping this is a story about book. It doesn't look like it. Is. Well, there's Walsh, so it might be. So, um, you know, I love Firefly. Most people do. Um, I don't think it's the greatest show in the universe as everybody else. But I do enjoy it quite a lot. Uh, here's uh, number 27 with just Walsh sitting in the driver's seat, relaxing. Um, here's number 28, which is um, 
them being attacked by some sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know why. Like I said, I haven't read them yet. Here's the alt cover for that. Like, I didn't know I was several months behind in this. They must have just forgotten to give me these. And then found them and gave them back. Uh, here's issue 29. And then that's the main line. And now um, they've started what's called Into the Verse. And Into the Verse takes place about 15 years, I think, after Firefly ends, after Serenity. And so Walsh and, and Zoe had a kid, and she's basically the pilot of Serenity now. And so it's really a story of her and her friends. Um, this is uh, this is issue one, and this is issue three. I, I had issue two in here. I don't know what I did with it. I must have gotten separated. Um, and their new adventures and kind of where the galaxy sits at this point. And most everybody thinks this is going to be the basis of the new series that Disney wants to do. That way they don't have to bring everybody back in and explain everything. Everybody can just come back. They'll be aged and um, it'll be easier to do. Hey, Tina, how you doing? Thanks for dropping by. Good to see you. And so, um, I really, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Um, it's kind of like, a, think of it as the next generation of Firefly. It's, it's writing is a little better. Josh has some stuff to do with it. I think you'll have less and less to do with it because, of course, issues with him um, if Disney does go forward. But it is nice to see that he's got some hand in it and that ideas he had going forward kind of, you know, um, are there. Yes, I'm kind of going between, because uh, I have more Star, Star, uh, Star Wars than anything else. I only really pick up uh, several different lines. I get Stranger Things, I get Firefly, I get um, Dark Crystal, Star Trek, Transformers, and Star Wars. But, um, and, and then a random things here and there. Um, so next we'll move on to High Republic, which Tina could already see. I have not started reading this yet. Um, I need to talk to Brandon and see if I need to read the books first or the comics, or I can read them simultaneously. I don't want to get too far ahead in the story. I guess wave two of this thing is getting ready to come out, and I haven't done any of it yet. So um, this was issue three. And then the uh, IDW does a Star Wars High Republic Adventures. And so it's it takes off the off the Marvel line and the Marvel characters, but it takes them a little bit in, in newer stories and short stories, just like the Star Wars Galaxy does. Um, here is an alt cover for Adventures, issue three. Like I said, I haven't read any of these yet. Uh, but I need to. Here's issue four of the normal base comic. Um, so, the yeah, Heroes Reborn. Hey, look, it's Marvel. We're resetting the universe again because it's not already complicated enough. But, I mean, the comics look great. I just haven't, I just haven't gotten into them yet. I'm always doing something. And so, I'm taking all of these to work um, on Saturday when I really don't have anything to do, but I'm, I'm supposed to be there for 12 hours. And I'm going to sit and read them all while uh, doing um, some paperwork and just kind of being there, being a placeholder. Uh, this is issue five. And I really like this uh, Bosque guy, looking guy, because he's missing an arm. And I think it's cool to have a, a Force user that is missing an arm. One of my, my one of my questions is, is he can he use the force? You know, we always see them reaching out like that to push something or something like that. Can you do can he use the force without having the arm motion? Um, I'm sure you can. You just concentrate and make it do what you need to, and all the hand stuff is just, you know, that's all for TV. Yeah, and see that's what gets me too, Tina, is I I have a whole bunch of these comics, and I haven't read almost any of them. 
And so then I end up with boxes, big, nice, you know, I don't get long boxes anymore. I get the shorter ones that only hold like 200. And then they get filled and put in a stack. And so I'm, I'm really trying to go out of my way to try and, and fix that and, and get it done. Um, so next up is Star Trek Year 5, which has been really good. Um, I mean, they're, they've done a lot of cool stuff with what would have been uh, the, the fifth season of um, Star Trek. See, I haven't even read that yet. I've got that sitting in the stack waiting to, to read. Um, but, I mean, IDW does great work. And, you know, it's it really takes all the aesthetic and everything of the 66 series and um, moves it out. So, um, in fact, I think it just wrapped up. Um because there's there's a new issue with Kirk leaving the bridge, and I think that's the end of season five. So I don't know. It would be cool if they went on to do stuff like in between um, classic Trek and Star Trek One. I'd like to kind of see that time frame because we've never really had a show or anything set there. That's why all this all this JJ verse junk that they keep putting out. There's plenty to do in the prime timeline. You don't need to make completely new shows. And if you are, I would like to have one set after uh, Voyager uh, to see what happened to the world, to the universe, to, to the Alpha Quadrant and stuff after Voyager ended. So, you know, that's my thing. Tonight I have to watch, I have to catch both episodes. I'm two episodes now behind on Loki. So I have to watch both of those tonight when I'm done here. That's why this is only going to take about an hour so that I can get this done. I'm still about 400 hours short on watch time. So I, you know, I'm trying to throw something up for people to see and uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. No, no other information. That's all I need is a, is a thumbs up, thumbs down. I've avoided um, a lot of stuff today on social media because I just do not want I don't want it ruined so um, on to Darth Vader the Darth Vader comics have been really great um, it gives you all kinds of information on Vader's thinking on the Emperor's thinking how he tricked um, you know Vader into doing stuff, or how he completely finished pulling Vader to the dark side. And, you know, I some stuff I don't like is him, is them putting Exodor in here, and they're, they're trying to backfill uh, Rise of Skywalker and stuff like that. And, you know, you make bad choices, you have to live with them, but... Not with Star Wars, because you can just write a new comic that completely explains Exodor, and then you're just supposed to accept that and move on. Cool. How you doing, Monkey Jeebus? Good to see you. Cool. I, 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 I really enjoyed the first episode. I just haven't had it. Well, this would be the middle of the season. So this would be basically their version of a filler episode. There are only six episodes, so, you know, you know, three left, so. Hmm, that'll be cool. Well, then it'll be good for me because I'm picking up two episodes tonight, so. Cool, that's good to know. Um, oh, uh, that uh, and of course, like I was saying, every issue that came out has a alt cover for the anniversary of the Empire Strikes Back. And this is the alt cover for uh, issue 10 of Darth Vader. This is one of my favorite shots in the Empire Strikes Back because it shows that, you know, Vader was just toying with him the whole time, just messing with the kid. Um, so um, here's Darth Vader 11. This comic was very cool um you basically this is when he gets to exodor and 
um, Vader is riding this giant thing. I don't know. But, and he thinks he's going to take on the Emperor and just gets his ass kicked. But this is also with the controversial, the Emperor has Luke's hand. But this all takes place on Exodor. So as you're walking around, you know, you see the, the clone chambers that already have little Snokes in them. Um, but it's very cool. Uh, reminded me a lot of Force Unleashed because Vader kind of gets his ass kicked a little bit, but then just absolutely just destroys people um, as soon as he gets angry, which is how he focuses all his power and his rage. Here's the alt cover for it. One of the most famous scenes in movie history. Um, then the Darth Vader comic also has started rolling over into the new series called um, War of the Bounty Hunters. And this is going to be a 35-issue miniseries. Um, but first, they had every issue had its own prelude to pull people to where they need to be to be in the story. So mostly this one was done from Vader's point of view and um, trying to figure out why he hates Han so much. And uh, the main story of... Uh, War of the Bounty Hunters is that uh, Boba Fett has had, um, not to give a ton away, the carbonization of Han has not held, and it's actually failing. So he's either going to die, or he's going to be released. So Boba Fett takes him somewhere to try and get him fixed, and then in the process, he's stolen. And so War of the Bounty Hunters is all the different bounty hunters who have been looking for uh, Han are now looking for uh, Boba Fett to steal Han away. Somebody did. Now they're all looking for him. I would not mind a Tom Hiddleston Doctor Who. And I'll tell you what. There you go. Absolutely, sir. Yes, he should. Um... I don't, I don't mind the new Doctor. I don't really watch the show anymore. I actually stopped during Peter's reign. Um, I do that with Doctor Who, and then I'll catch up. But, um, I, I, man, he would be a good Who. Um, so this is just the norm, normal Bounty Hunters book. Um, it's got him and, and Dingar kind of working together for a few issues. Din, this is how Dingar gets pulled into the War of the Bounty Hunters. And so, again... There's an alt cover for the Empire Strikes Back, and you can kind of see how these kind of move depending on where you are in the story. So you can kind of, it tells the whole story um, issue by issue. So you have, you have Darth Vader number 10 here, which then moves into Bounty Hunters, number 10, which then goes into Darth Vader number 11. So you can kind of see that you can kind of see the whole story of The Empire Strikes Back rolls through these covers, which is an issue I showed you earlier. Um, this is issue 11 with Bosk. And there's the alt cover for that. And then, again, they started the War of the Bounty Hunters. And... Um, the bounty hunter guy, I can, I can never remember his name when I tend, need to. Um, do, 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 uh, balance. Yeah, that's right. I keep forgetting that. Um, he, Han saved his life at one point, and then through some misunderstandings, Han thought he was trying to kill him. And so, while he doesn't hate Han, Han hates him. But he finds out that um, Vader's going to go after Han and try to get the Carbonite. Um, so he, he decides to try and, and fix the problem he had with him. Of course, he runs across, um, our, our friend, uh, Chewbacca, who only remembers the attack. And so they have it out a little bit, but that's actually the, the prelude was getting them to the place where everybody else already is. And then this issue takes place there. 
Uh, this is an alt cover. This is the first alt cover for um, the 50th anniversary. I would assume they're going to do the exact same thing they did with all of the um, Empire Strikes Back, and they're just going to go through. I don't know if it's going to be all of the films or all of Lucasfilm. Um, I would love to get a random Indiana Jones cover of a Star Wars comic. Um, or a reprint of the Star Wars of Indiana Jones would be cool. Yeah, because he has that mischievous quality of both, I think, the, the seventh and the fourth doctors. Um, but I think he could hold up with Tenet. Um, so, you know. I, I could see that. I know that Lady Loki is actually listed as a completely different character in the credits. So, um, I don't know. I, I still, like I said, I haven't seen two episodes, so I'm not sure if they've already addressed that issue. Then we have the main Star Wars line. Now, the main Star Wars comic is now taking place after The Empire Strikes Back. So, you get covers, you get all the information, and you get. And so this takes place right after. And then she's kind of remembering what happened and explaining it to other people. And then they decide that they're going to go try and rescue Han. Um, here's the alt cover for that. And most of them have an alt, alt, alt cover, which is really cool. I love these ones, the action figure ones. They're my favorites. But... And then, of course, once that happens, they all move into a prelude version of War of the Bounty Hunters as well. Uh, Luke, R2, 3PO, and Chewbacca decide to go try and rescue um, Boba Fett. They don't take Lando with them, however, um, because Chewbacca is not sure how Han would react. Chewbacca knows that Han, uh, that Lando's cool, but, you know... When I first saw her, the Lady Loki, I really actually thought that was the new Doctor Who um, lady, because it looks a lot like her. Um, I thought it was pretty cool. So here's an alt cover for that, which is in some sort of gold for no reason. And here's the alt cover for that, which is the action figure version of that comic. And then here's the alt, 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 alt version of that for The Empire Strikes Back. So it's, they do this all the time. Hey, G-Force, what's up? Just going through this massive pile of books that I've gotten. Um, so this is um, uh, issue 14 for War of the Bounty Hunters. This is, I haven't caught up yet. Here's the alt cover for that, for a B-Wing pilot. I love these action figure ones. I have most all of them. And then, of course, it has its own book. So War of the Bounty Hunters that takes place in crossovers all over the place. And um, this is issue, this is Alpha. This is, uh, I don't know why they do that. It's number one. It's not zero. It's not Alpha. It's not Prelude. It's episode, it's one. Ugh. But here's episode, issue one. So this talks about how Boba Fett got to where they are and how it was stolen from him and that kind of thing. Um, here's an alt cover for Alpha. Of course, this is a very Boba Fett heavy book. Here's another alt cover for Alpha. Um, then, of course, everybody's doctor, favorite Dr. Afra is going to get tied into it because she sees a big score um see that's how i got cut back into collecting star wars i started covering getting the figure covers and then my comic book store said i had to buy a normal cover if i wanted to get the um extra covers so i did and then i started getting back into transformers and then star wars and that kind of thing planet of the apes 
see, I can read comic books. It'll take me, I don't know, less than a minute to read a comic book. That's why I don't like the mean four dollars, because I can I can I read very quickly. And so I will read it, and then sometimes I'll go back and look at it closer or I'll slow myself down. You know. Yeah, you know they're gonna put these together in a huge book. So, you know, but again, I like the alt covers. So so here's issue nine. This is the issue that took place before with Afra and her. And then this is the prelude. So now this week should have been new issues of them. I, I didn't go to my comic shop today. Lesson not learned. Um, and then here's the action figure cover for, what is this for? This is, oh, this is War of the Bounty Hunters Alpha. This is Boba Fett in his black armor. Well, he, he spray paints himself and calls himself Django so that he can ish, enter a contest because um, he needs money. I don't remember why he did that. I think it's because he needed money. So back to Trek for a minute. This is a collection of some of the IDW comics um, for a series called uh, The Gift. Um, I didn't read this before, and so I... I picked it up because I love Q. He's one of my favorite Star Trek characters. So, um, you know, I just wanted to go and, and pick this up. And it's written by Q, John Delancey. It's another reason that I wanted to pick this up. So, I was very happy with that. And Michael J. Friedman, who is a, a great a great Trek novel writer. Um Another series I started was uh, uh, Voyager has started this series called Seven's Reckoning, um, where Seven kind of learns, um, she's kind of learning how to deal with diplomatic things a little more and how to deal with what is now her humanity. You used to see a lot of stuff between her and Janeway, which are always good episodes. Anything when her and Janeway did stuff. And then every alt cover is just another uh, cast member, main cast member. So, of course, the first one was um, Seven of Nine. The second one was Jane Way. The third one was Wang, I think. And then, uh, uh, no, no, I think it was Chakotay. I don't know. So then this next big pile is all Transformers. So this is Transformers 84, and what this is, is this is a collection book, and IDW does this every so often, and what this is, is this is a collection of the British series. So you get basically issue one of the Marvel comic, and then you get uh, the Transformers UK 9 through uh, 12, and then Transformers 0 from the new series. So it mixes the, the Marvel version with the UK Marvel version. And then by the time you get to the end, you're in the first issue of IDW's 84, which is a kind of a, a retelling of uh, the first uh, contact type thing, which I really liked. I thought it was a great book. Um, and as always, the uh, stuff was, was great. Uh, now see, that's, yeah, of course they should. Um, that could be half a wave. I love Q. He was. He can be a jackass if you meet him in person, if you hit him up on the wrong day. Yes, he was. Um, I don't think they still acknowledge that, but I do because it's truth. And he fought Doctor Who and lost, and he fought the Fantastic Four and lost. So, you know, I'm sure they've retconned all that out. Uh, here's this year's annual. Um, I have not read it. It looks like a crazy issue from when I flipped through. It looks like it's got some of the, uh, uh, combiners in it, whether it's, a uh, Computron and, uh, uh, Brutus, uh, Brutus, uh, Brutus, uh, Brutus, uh, Brutus, uh, Devastator was in it as well. Bruticus, I couldn't get that out. Um, and then... This is Transformers, the magic of Cybertron. The first Transformers and Little, Mer uh, Little Pony was 
cute. It was escapism. And it was very funny. Um, I have not started reading this yet, um, but it, it looks as silly. I mean, I would almost put this up as an animated series. I would watch it. Um, I don't understand the pony bits at all, um, but they're actually pretty funny. And then, of course, there's an alt cover for it. So you get Optimus and uh, is that Whirlwind and uh, Bumblebee. I don't know who the tur I don't know who the uh, ponies are, but I'd say this is right up there with last year's or I think it was last year. Uh, they did um, uh, Ghostbusters versus Transformers, where Starscream's ghost inhabited things. I liked that. And, of course, here's issue two. I'm going to have to yell at them for not getting me my uh, issue, uh, my second copy. But I found that that's happened a lot recently. Um, this is Transformers Escape. This is a completely new series. And this is basically a story of them leaving um, Cybertron and how they got to Earth and things like that. And like steps in between. But this is issue two. And then there's an alt cover, which is pretty cool. Starscream and Ice. Actually, I don't think that's Starscream. I don't know who that is, actually. I said I haven't read it, so I don't know. Some Insecticon attacks. Everybody having some sort of party. This is issue four. And the alt cover of issue four. No. Um, they make it clear that when Back to the Future starts and the Little Mermaids, or Little Mermaid, Little my Little Pony and Ghostbusters, and they've crossed over with Star Trek as well, that those are all alternate universes. They're part of the Transformers multiverse, if you want to, if you want to go with that. So, um, this is the main Transformers comic, and at the moment it's called War World. And here Starscream is telling Megatron that he's actually part of Hydra and is no longer going to listen to him. Um, here's the alt uh, cover. Oh, no, this is issue 29. And this is the alt cover for issue 29. The Transformers comic is really good. I really do enjoy it. Like I said, I just get behind. This is issue 30. I mean, at the moment, I'm four months behind in reading it. And here's the alt cover for that with uh, Cyclonus. And then the last couple, they have started the Beast Wars back up again. And I haven't read this either, so I'm not quite sure how far they go in, if it's just a, a retelling of everything or what. So I'm looking forward to reading this. Of course, uh, they announced the new Transformers movie is basically going to be Beast Wars related. So every issue comes with one of these kind of action figure covers with a couple characters on it. That's uh, uh, Rhinox and Scorponok. And then this is the A cover. This is what you would normally see laying out. And then I, here's issue uh, three. And issue four. And the alt cover of issue four. With Waspinator. Oh, Waspinator always explode. So, um, that's about it for um, my box. Like I said, I got, there was so much, and I got to read. And they get heavy. Comics are so heavy when you get them together, you know.
those transformers are kind of like slow robots. You would never think they would uh, reason faster than humans, but they can think on the same level. Yeah, actually, I think they they dumb some of the transformers down so that they don't do so much um, against us. But uh, the the transformers, um, uh, Ghostbusters one was cool. I I, I thought the, the crossovers were going to be dumb. They're actually really well written. Whenever IDW does one of these things, like when they did Batman versus the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the story made sense. It was crazy that it did. Um, there's a Transformers versus TMNT coming up. Uh, there's a Transformers uh, horror book coming up where it seems like one of the smaller ones, like maybe Bumblebee, is trapped at Crystal Lake supposedly and fighting jason i don't know if he is i'm rooting for jason i don't like bumblebee um you know i i can do without him oh yeah i got my cobain game shirt today check out his site buy some stuff i'm gonna go through and buy some uh, pint glasses tomorrow from a couple people i've decided i'm gonna collect pint glasses because mine came out really good and so I've decided I'm going to collect pint glasses of my favorite YouTubers um, and put them on a, in a display, maybe, for the moment. Well, that's the problem with all of these, is the Transformers could easily destroy anybody. They just step on them or kick them or shoot them with their giant guns. But, you know, something will happen that Bumblebee's disabled in some way. Um, I, I didn't say it makes sense. Uh, I just said that it might be interesting. Uh, when the when the Transformers My Little Pony was announced, it was very confusing to even think of how that would mix. Um, but basically, it was a, a, a warp hole, you know. Oh, maybe that's what they'll do. Is Spike and his uh, that girlfriend of his are out with Bumblebee? And Jason disables Bumblebee very quickly. And then it's it's a story of Spike trying to repair Bumblebee and get out of there. I'd watch that. I, I, that I, hmm. That's a good idea, Monkey Jeebus. So, um, like I said, this wasn't going to be a very long one today. I just wanted to get that stuff done because um, I needed to get it done Monday and I didn't even remotely got sucked into a half hour conversation about sports, which I don't even really watch. Um, but it actually was kind of nice to talk about something different that wasn't Star Wars or uh, Marvel related. But um, I was thinking that there was some news this today. But I can't remember. So I, I don't know. So, well, thanks everybody for, for hanging out. Uh, for a while. Um, if you can, uh, please put this on repeat or something in the background. Um, I still need about 300 or more hours to get monetized. I don't even know what I'm going to do with monetization once I get it, uh, but it's now a goal I'm trying to get. Uh, and so I'm at about, uh, I think, 3,700 hours and I need 4,000. So I need like three or four thousand, uh, three or 400 more hours in order to get over the, the bump. So if you can, just turn turn the channel on, hit play all, and, and go, go to work, leave it on mute in the background. I'd appreciate it. Um, if, you're, if you really are, are bored and you want to uh, buy a t-shirt or something, the Teespring store is open. Um, I just, uh, Salacious Rum just opened up a Teespring store. It's really cool. And... Um, so has uh, Prentice Ewok and Sleeping Collectibles, of course. He's had his for a while. Uh, I don't remember where Colbane's was, um, but I was trying to get a T-shirt from each of them, and then now I'm gonna, just going to switch completely over to doing uh, pint glasses. And if they ever do shot glasses, I might do those. So um, we'll see. Yeah, I don't. I, it's it's now just a goal to get it done, than to actually try and make any money on it. Um, I don't know, it's, I mean, it's not like I'm ever going to be able to quit my job. I can't make my bills on YouTube, you know, not unless I get, I'd have to have like, you know, 
I don't know, 70 or 80,000 followers who actually watch all the time and do super chatty, stupid stuff. I don't want all that. And I don't have to deal with YouTube and getting money from them. I know Sleepy, both Sleepy and Mr. Stargill had a hard time getting cash off of them. They had to set all this weird stuff up. I don't know if I want to mess with any of that. I, I'm just happy being me and having the community I have. If you know people who'd like to follow the channel, tell them to watch. See if the, what they think and subscribe. If not, I'm, I'm kind of happy with the subscribers I have. I don't need to be huge. I'm already big. I don't need to be big on YouTube. But also, so coming up this week, uh, tomorrow I'm going to do some hunts. So I'm probably going to try and hit it. Well, if they'll let me film, um, I'm going to hit a couple of targets and a couple of Walmarts tomorrow. I need to go to my GameStop because I should have had stuff in there and they haven't called me telling me that my stuff is here. So I should have this uh, 10 inch sound wave should be out by now, but I'll go out and see. So that's coming up this week. Um, also, uh, we've got a uh, peg warmers on Saturday. I don't know who's running that. I think it might be Super John this time or it might be Mark um, Blue Harvest's channel. But check us out there. Um, of course, everybody else has got all their stuff they're running. And then if nothing else, we'll be back on Monday. Um, I'll have those toy hunts running Friday. I'll edit them up when I get home Thursday and get at least one set of them up Friday, maybe a setup on Sunday. Um, and then Monday we'll do uh, another one of these, except it'll be mostly our normal stuff. And we'll talk uh, movies and anything that's happening over the weekend. Should be gearing up for Black Widow. So I'm definitely seeing that in the theater. We can talk about that once it's all said and done. I should be caught up on Loki and on the Bad Batch. So until uh, next time, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me for a while.